Hey guys, so I'm back to talk to you again today, kind of like vlog style. Um, we're in the bedroom. I had this huge plan when I mentioned in my house tour that we were putting the TV in here and I wasn't as thrilled about it, but I was coming up with a plan to disguise it. That plan failed. Um, so I actually have my failed idea here. I'm going to show you guys before I return it. And thank God I didn't do anything with it. But, all right. Yeah, we're going to turn. So this is what I have right now. And to be honest with you, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm a little sad because I had to move my eye chart to the bathroom. And it is just like a big black hole. But it's not terrible. Um, it's better than with the DIY I had planned. So I saw these DIYs online where people did the pull down vintage style map and it looked amazing. So I spent hours searching for a pull down style map, not that it actually pulls down, but I spent hours looking for something similar and not $300 because they were like $300 or $350. No, not happening. So I came up with this guy here. I'm going to tip the camera and show you guys. And this is from Hobby Lobby. And I, wow, I'm really bad at that. Okay. So this is from Hobby Lobby and I loved the idea of it. Um, the whole like large map thing and in theory this map looks really pretty but I'm gonna show you what happened when I draped it over here so I just draped it over the top of the TV to kind of see what I was gonna think I was gonna make a little shelf up in the top here and have it look styled like a pull down it was gonna look just like that but my walls are white it's basically the equivalent of like wall oatmeal you guys so I mean, I like oatmeal. I like the way it tastes, but it's not like pretty to look at. And this is just, it's bland. It just blends in with the wall. I almost like the contrast of, or the contrast of just the TV better. So <laughs> I'm going to return this because this is not going to work. And I'm going to just live with the TV for now because it really doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was gonna. And this I feel like would be worse if it was maybe more colorful or if it was a map with black tones. Because I feel like the room being white, it needs to be something darker to contrast the walls. I think that if it was darker toned, it might work. And I'm not going to just like count this out completely because who knows what I'll come up with. I may come across like a map or a poster or something at Goodwill that would work perfectly. And then I can still make this happen. But this is not going to work for me. So this is, uh, this one's off the drawing table. Then I'm going to start working on this guy today. So I picked up this bench at a consignment store for three bucks. The bottom is just, um, it's actually painted brown. And then the top is like an orangey brown velvet. So not my color scheme, but I liked the look of the legs. I'll hold those up again so you guys can see them. So I figured this would be cute in my booth. I'm going to go ahead. I was going to strip it down to wood. And I think if I was keeping it, I would do that. But I feel like I'm going to sell it for a low-ish price that putting the time in to strip it down is not going to be cost effective. So I'm just going to paint it white and make it chippy and then see if I can find a little piece of grain sack that will look cute on it. And if I don't have a piece of grain sack that will look cute, I'll go ahead and pick like a buffalo check fabric from Walmart or something. But I'm going to just kind of dress it up a little bit, make it so I can put it in my booth around like the $20 price range or so. So yeah. Um... And I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint. That's what I use for everything. This kind here you get at Walmart. But um, when I just said that, that made me think. I was at Home Depot over the weekend and Bear just came out with a line of chalk paint. So I think I have a pamphlet in my purse. Let me see if I can take you guys over here. So I was really excited about this. Um, Price-wise, it's more right away, like off the bat. I'm trying to talk to you guys and not fall down the stairs. So it's more right off the bat. I found it. But like per ounce, it's cheaper. So the Walmart one, you get like eight ounces and you pay like $6-ish. The Bear one, you get 31 ounces for $20. But you get more of a color selection. So I want to show you guys this because I was so excited to try this out. I don't know how it works because I haven't used it yet. So I can't speak to that. But... It's got way more color options than the Walmart one. And I saw a bunch of these like right off the bat. They got me really excited. So on the green page here, the Vineyard Passage and the Green Silk. I think those are going to be super fun. 
and I have been craving painting something like an inky navy or even like a charcoal and they have two colors that are going to be perfect. Check out that timeless blue. And then classic noir is nice too. But I think the timeless blue is going to be the first one I use. And I don't know what I, I obviously have to find something first. Um, I'm basically on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace every day looking. But I think timeless blue will be the first one I use. And they did have chalks too. Or not chalks. Guys, I can't even talk today. Um, they had waxes as well. So they do show those here. Let me just fold this thing around and show you guys. All right, so waxes. They have clear, white, and dark. And I didn't see how much those cost because I was trying to just do this quick and grab the pamphlet. And to be honest with you, I was just so excited that they had chalk paint at all that I was just, I was like out of my mind. I just grabbed this and I left with it. So I'm hoping to get a piece that I can try this on and let you guys know what I actually think. But in the meantime, if, you, uh, if you're if you doing it, Walmart, the Walmart brand is excellent too. And I do it a little bit differently than they, they, they tell you to. I do usually two coats of this will work. And then they sell the waxes. I usually just rub oil in it, um, like a linseed or a hemp oil. Right now I just have a furniture oil because I ran out and I used that. But basically you do the two coats. Once they're dry, you would either wax the piece. So if you wax it, you're going to wax it on and then you're going to let it sit for a little and you take it back off. With the oil, I like because I can put it on and take it off almost immediately. And it's, I don't want to say cures, but it it softens it a little bit. So instead of looking completely chalky and matte, it's, I don't know, the way I described it to my husband was butter. I told him it looks kind of like a buttery finish where it's not shiny, but it just looks rich. So I like to use oil. I mean, you're welcome to use wax and stuff too. I've used that before and I have no issues. I just feel like the oil's easier too. It's liquid and it goes on easier. You don't have to do as much like pushing it into cracks and crevices. So maybe it's just the easy way out, but it's what I like to do. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna kind of get started on this, show you guys what it looks like when I'm done, and then I'll take it over to my booth. I'm waiting for that little uh, footstool to dry. I wanted to show you guys. I was also putting together some other things to go in my booth. Um, I wanted to restock with a few more Christmas-themed items. So I have my washboard out there that used to hang in my kitchen, and I've had it just sitting upstairs doing nothing with it since. So I'm going to take that over and see. I picked up this jar at Goodwill today for $2, and I just had some extra ornaments on hand, so I went ahead and put them in there. I figure it lets me make the price a little higher, and it's festive. I also found this jadeite bowl today at Goodwill. I paid $3.99 for that guy. And then I threw some shiny brights in there that have the same minty color. I showed you guys that picture frame earlier in the week, I think it was, in a haul video. And I just went ahead and put a magnolia wreath on the front of that. I paid $2 for the frame. The magnolia wreath I had, it was things that I made out of scraps. So I'm going to go ahead with that. Um, some ice skates here. I picked those up, I think... I think they were $1.99, and I just stuffed some picks in them. I'm just going to hang them like that. And then right now I'm working on this guy. This is a wood frame that I found free by the side of the road. And I was saving it because I didn't know what I wanted it for. And I went ahead and just put some greenery on top and a star, and then I'm going to tie a pretty ribbon to hide all of that. Okay, guys, so it's all finished, and I'm going to kind of talk you through my thought process while I show you. So I did the grain sack on top, and this is just a scrap that I had left over from one that I used to cover a different stool. And then the bottom I painted white. So it was originally that brown color, which I lucked out with because as you distressed it, you can't even tell that it's not wood. And then I also wanted a little more distressing on this because the top is also white, and I wanted to add in some texture and some difference between the top and bottom. Hey guys, so I'm back in the car again, and I'm about to head to my antique booth. I've been spending about, I don't know, I spent maybe an hour this morning just going to local stores and like looking for anything I could bring with me so that I would have more stuff to add all at once. So I do have some things in the back that I showed you in the last vlog that I'm taking. And I did pick up some other things this morning. So I went to my usual consignment store and I found a ton of mason jars. So I got three large ones and they're the glass ones with the glass lid and the metal band that kind of snaps over and they're all wrapped up in the back so I'm not going to unwrap them um, 
but I got those for $2 a piece and then there were two smaller ones and I got those for $1.50 a piece. So I think I'm just going to take them over right now empty, like as is. If they don't sell, I can add something and then bump the price up a little. But I'm thinking the ones I got for $2, I'm going to go ahead and put, I think it's $6 and then the ones for $1.50, I'm going to do it 5 It's still a good price for whoever's buying it and it's also a good return for me. Um, but I've picked up something that I was so excited to show you guys. So I am loving this whole vlogging thing in the fact that I get to show you stuff you wouldn't normally see. So normally I would have picked these up and taken them over to my booth and maybe shared a picture on Instagram or something. But I found two of these blow mold candles to go over and I only paid $4 a piece for these. They're the type where you've got to put the little light in the back. But I just thought these are adorable. These are a great idea for people with smaller spaces or if you don't want to go with the huge blow mold Santa. I think these are going to be really cool. And I paid $4. I think I'm going to go ahead and put $12 a piece on them because compared to what you pay on eBay, it's a little bit lower plus you don't have to worry about shipping. And then I also picked up an old school golden book, uh, Frosty the Snowman. And this guy was a dollar. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put five bucks on him. It'll be a good price, but it's kind of a cute thing. Even if you don't have kids, it'd be something neat to decorate with. And then I also scored and found some red transferware cups and plates. And um, I'm trying to think. I can't get those out right now because they're wrapped up, but I'll show you those later sometime, maybe in a haul video or just like a little update. So I'm going to go ahead and use those for Christmas. But I'm going to get headed over to my booth now. I stopped for a quick lunch. I stopped at Taco Bell and um, I always try and eat healthy even if I'm eating out. So here the fresco tacos are actually a, a pretty good option. They're about 140 calories a piece and what they do is any of the cheese or the creamy type sauces they will take those off and put pico de gallo on. So it's just um, tomatoes and onion and cilantro. The cilantro I could do without but it it doesn't you know it's there so but it's a healthier option and it's cheap and quick and it's right on the way to my booth so I stopped and got that and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more info about my booth right now too I don't know I mean I don't know if it's gauche to talk about the money but I told you before that it's $75 for the rent and then they take six percent so my first month I just got my first check I got a check for, it was $400 I made, and then I also made $52 in cash because the owner bought some things for herself, and instead of writing out a separate check, she just gave me cash with the check. Um, so overall, I made like a little bit over $300. So I am, I'm thrilled. I think that was really good. I don't know if it's gonna be that good. Every month, I feel like I had a really good first month, so I don't know what to expect, but you know, it made it worth it at least where I'm not going to lose money for the, the, uh, three month trial period. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going at it. See if I can keep going the same and keep stockpiling furniture and painting it, but I'm going to get headed over there now because I want to go home and kind of just relax with the dogs, maybe read or nap or something. So, uh, thank you guys for listening to me and kind of hearing what I had to say today and I'll see you in the next video.